Hi friends, this is Seth Itzkan of Soil for Climate, and like a lot of you, I just watched the Alan Savory, George Mombio discussion on whether or not livestock are essential for mitigating climate change. It was hosted at the University of Oxford in the UK, which is a big deal, particularly at the University of Oxford Museum of Natural History. So. I'm very excited that this happened. It's, it's important that this conversation be held at a very high level. And, um, and I'm excited that many members of Soil for Climate also watched it. Um, I just want to share with you some of my post-viewing uh, thoughts. Um, I'm speaking on behalf of myself, but I believe I speak for the Soil for Climate organization and the Soil for Climate community in general. Um, so first of all, I'm very thankful it happened, and I want to thank the hosts for the the hosts, you know, which is uh, Oxford University itself, um, and other partners for putting it uh, that on. That's very important. And kudos to them for doing it. Kudos to them for not shying away from the topic. Um, so. In addition to the sort of the normal discussion about livestock being managed properly in a way to reverse desertification and sequestered carbon, like you can see in the virtual background behind me, really the takeaway is the discussion on policy, holistic policy formation. And this is really the central theme for Alan, particularly at this point in his life. You know, he comes from a policy background and um, they've been doing, they, Alan and, and his colleagues, you know, have been doing the um, grazing work for 50 plus years. Um, and it's time for him really to focus on policy. That's what he really wants to do right now. He wants to see what it's like for policy to be, formed, to be created holistically. And um, it was a little frustrating for Mambio and perhaps even the moderator and perhaps even some in the audience who were like, well, what about carbon, <laughs> you know, and what about, you know, livestock and whatever. Um, but Alan is saying that the root cause of all these problems is the reductionist management and that even, even if by some miracle restoring soil wasn't sequestering carbon, you're still not going to reverse desertification without restoring the soil of the world. And, and you know, this issue of oxidation, he kept bringing it up. And I'm afraid most people don't really know what he was talking about. You know, oxidation is what happens to grass if it just dries, if it's either not eaten or not burned. It just dries and it becomes desert. And so when you don't have the ruminants to eat the grass, the only other tool that humans have is fire. But when you don't, but when that's not applied, then it just becomes desert. But if you just keep applying fire, it will also still become desert. In these dry land areas, you have to have the ruminants creating the biological um, uh, you know, processing of the cellulose and the plant matter and that the moist moving the moisture and the nutrients across the landscapes in these dry uh, seasons and this is the point that Mambio and, and frankly most people in this camp they just don't get they don't understand the difference between the perennial wet environments like London and these seasonally dry environments that are dry most of the time like you see behind me those environments have to have the movement of large herbivores across the landscape, moving moisture and nutrients, particularly during the dry season, and recycling the plant matter and the cellulose so it doesn't just oxidize. This is just a biological fact. This is how it works. This is how nature works. So then the question can be, well, let's just rewild. And, and again, Mambio doesn't understand the difference between rewilding in the UK and rewilding in Kenya or South Africa. 
in the UK, yes, if you leave the land alone, it will go back to forest. But, but what's going to happen in the Karoo, like in this area behind me, if you just don't, don't do anything? You're going to be wild? What does that mean? Billions of impala and antelope and gazelle and lions and hyenas are are just going to come back. Well, what's going to happen is you're just going to get massive desertification, massive starvation. the The immigrant problem is going to just get worse and worse. You're going to get wars and social unrest. And this is what Alan is talking about when he talks about policy. You have to have a policy that deals with all of it, with the social issues and the economic and the environmental issues, we're not going to reverse global warming. So there really are two conversations going on. And one conversation is just talking about the science on cows and methane and soil. And the other is Alan talking about policy formation and how are we going to create policy that looks at the totality of the world and figures out how to encompass, you know, livestock in a way that's beneficial for humanity, for the soil. So when he talks about the root cause of global warming and climate change and, you know, mega fires, desertification, he's talking about the policy formation. We're still managing the world and managing the policy around our world in what he would call a reductionist way. Just think of it like a factory. The purpose of a factory is to produce a widget of some sort. And that's how we're treating land. We say, well, the purpose of this land is to produce beef or, sh or, 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 or sheep or corn or soy or rice. You know, and that type of management itself is reductionist. And so Alan is trying to elevate the conversation about policy, not just about any particular slice of land. Okay, so that's it. That, that's what's going on. Um, regarding the sort of the ruminants on the land discussion, it was nice to see the pushback from the audience against Mambio saying, look, dude, you're just wrong. You know, there's lots of evidence. There's peer-reviewed evidence. There's these, these pictures. You know, Mambio's assertion that all these pictures are just made up or they're not peer-reviewed or the dates are... Oh, give me a break, Mambio. Really? Okay, anyway, um, we have a compendium of nearly 40 peer-reviewed papers now. Every imaginable type of ecological indicator has been analyzed to minute detail with scrutiny, with peer-review scrutiny, with leading uh, university participation, leading journals, Journal of Soil and Water Conservation is just one. Um, they look at plant, at biomass, uh, bacteria, uh, fungal bacterial ratio, water retention, infiltration rates, soil carbon, nitrogen, the methane accounting. The methane has been accounted for. I mean, if you want to argue with peer review literature, that's one thing, and that's the appropriate thing to do. But to simply say it doesn't exist, I, you know, I don't even know where to start. I guess the way to start is by going to the Soil for Climate Compendium. You know, just look at it yourself, okay? Um, and um, it was very nice to, to have that final question being from the child in the back, um, asking about the, the animals and... and um, you know, the recycling of the nutrients and stuff. It was very sweet that that's how it ended. And, and, and it sort of felt like the audience was sort of emotionally behind Alan, even if they didn't completely understand everything he was saying. Um, and Mambio, frankly, you know, was immature. I mean, he swore twice. He swore twice at the, at the University of Oxford Museum of Natural History. I'm not going to repeat what he said, but that's that's horrifying. You know, that just brings it down. He, every time he does that, he does Alan a favor. He just does Alan a favor. And um, I thought Alan was the consummate gentleman. He knows he's introducing profoundly radical ideas. And, you know, God bless him. He's fearless. He's calm. He didn't get angry. And uh, in my opinion, he won. He won because he was simply the better person. 
Um, but the science is, in fact, on his side. Now, a lot of what Monbiot says is, is right. The concentration of power around food is horrifying. He's completely right. Um, weaker intellectual property laws and, and stronger, um, ah, what was the other one? Uh, I forget what the other one, but anyway, I completely agreed with him in that regard. Um, that certainly most of grazing is deleterious. He's right. That there's a lot of greenwashing by big corporations. He's right, he's right, he's right. There's a lot of sort of social critique that Mambio is dead on, and I'm completely in support of him, and, and so is Alan Savory. But unfortunately, his, his, his fanaticism with hating livestock just blinds him to just the reality of the situation. Is there greenwashing? Of course. Is that just universally what's going on? Really? Do you think this picture behind me is greenwashing? You think, I don't know, uh, uh, Cargill went down to South Africa and organized these sheep to restore the grass? Like, really? Um, it's just absurd. Um, is, uh, is, is there a certain amount of scheming with carbon credits? Absolutely. And a lot of my closest colleagues are against carbon credits. So, you know, I'm not putting, I'm not saying that just because there's carbon credits that that's legitimate. Absolutely not. That, that system can very easily be exploited. Um, but nonetheless, the soil is getting better and you can see it for yourself. Um, uh, um, also, Mambio just confuses rewilding in, a, in these wet areas versus in these dryland areas. I've said that already. Anyway, the conversation is happening, and I think that's the good thing. It's happening. It's happening respectfully. And that's really my takeaway from this thing. It was a victory because it happened at all, and it happened respectfully. And frankly, there was no clear winner from a purely sort of impartial point of view which is a good thing. That's okay. That, in some regards, that means Alan won. <laughs> you know, because if Mambio wasn't able to dispense with Alan in this setting, that's a problem for him. <laughs> there's going to be more of Alan, and there's going to be more people listening to what he's saying and making the distinction that Mambio isn't. So anyway, those are my thoughts, speaking just for myself. Um, thank you, everyone, for listening and for being part of this. And please just refer to our compendium um, and pass the word along. Okay. Thank you. Love you. God bless and, and all of that. Oh, yebo. <laughs> Definitely yebo. <laughs>